Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Greta, or as some people know me as Rahima. And today I decided that I wanted to do my conversion story. I wanted to explain to some people why I converted, and also I was hoping that I could help some other people because I know that when I was converting, I didn't have anybody to look up to. I kind of felt alone. Yeah, I had Muslim friends who were already Muslim, but that was all I had. I didn't have somebody who had converted prior to me that I could really talk to. And I would go to YouTube, but I found mostly men's stories. I didn't find that many stories of women. So I'm here as an American woman who was once Christian, giving my story in hopes that it will help somebody else. As I said before, I was Christian. To be more specific, I was Catholic. And I want to say that I did not have any problems being Catholic. I was happy as a Catholic. I was Catholic for 21 years, to be exact. I was born Catholic in a Catholic family. My whole family was either Catholic or Christian. And I even went to a Catholic school from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, having a religion class every single day. I know Catholicism really well. Then I started to feel like I was doing these things because I had to, not because I wanted to. So when I became, when I came to college, I decided that I was going to go into Catholicism for myself and learn things because I wanted to, not because I had to. So I started going to the church I went every Sunday and I joined the youth group on campus and I did retreats. I was a retreat leader and I was very involved and I was really happy until eventually I started to feel everybody getting into cliques and I didn't feel part of the group anymore and I felt really left out. I started to search for other organizations, other religious organizations on campus. I joined the choir and all of those places I felt really left out and also I felt like people weren't doing things for the right reasons. That they were doing things to make themselves look good or feel good and it wasn't for the mercy of God. And also I didn't like how with those friends when we were at church it was okay, but outside of church we don't talk about God. It's not cool to talk about God. I love talking about God. I love learning about religion and I just, I love religious talk and it was uncool and I was ruining the vibe and I didn't, I didn't like that feeling. Then one day I met a group of Muslims. We became really good friends and they taught me a lot. I was nervous and I asked them, please, can I ask you some questions? I'm really sorry if I insult you. And they said, no, no, ask away, please. We want to help you. So I asked them questions. I was then eventually, about a year later, I started to date a Saudi guy. He's from Saudi Arabia. And I remember when I was with him one day, I had a crucifix. And he says, oh, Jesus. I love him so much and I was just like wait what you what I was so ignorant at the time I didn't know I didn't know that Muslims love Jesus I thought that was really just interesting and so he started to explain to me and go really in depth about Islam and I learned so much from him then I started to wonder, why do Muslims not eat pork? So I started to do the research and I saw that it was in the Old Testament and the Bible and it was in Quran. And there was also a lot of health reasons why you shouldn't eat pork. So I decided to stop eating pork. I haven't eaten pork now for a year and a half. And thankfully I actually inspired my brother to stop eating pork, mashallah. Then about ha a half a year later, I joined a learning community and the learning community was all about learning about other cultures and so we went to an international festival at the local masjid. 
we went to the masjid, and if you don't know what masjid is, it means mosque. We went to the, to the masjid, and there was all of these different cuisines from all over the Middle Eastern countries, and it was so cool. And there was camels and a lot of just really cool stuff, and I was really excited. But the most memorable thing for me was the tour of the mosque. I remember my tour guide talking about the mercy of Allah and it just drew me in and I was asking so many questions and he was more than willing to answer them. He, I asked him so many questions, I feel like he probably was so annoyed with me. And then every time he would talk about any prophets that were in Christianity, they were also in Islam and I thought that was really interesting. He talked about Adam, peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him. Abraham, peace be upon him. And I loved how every time he would say a prophet's name, he'd follow it with peace be upon him immediately. There was so much respect for these prophets and it was so refreshing. Then he started to tell a story about the mercy of Allah and it made me, I'll never forget it. He told this story about this man who was sinning all the time. He did all of these terrible things. And on his deathbed, he had his two sons come and he said, when I die, I want you to take my body, I want you to burn it, then I want you to take my ashes and spread it across the land. So they did that. They burned his body and spread it across the land. He thought that he'd be able to run away from God. He did not want to seek the wrath of God. Well, that didn't affect his soul. And God found him and asked him, Why did you do this? Why did you try to run from me? You should have known that this wouldn't have worked. And the man said, Because I was a fear of you, Allah. I was so afraid. I didn't know what else to do. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. He was so merciful. He was so merciful upon this man. And he said that because you showed fear of me, and I could tell you were very sorry for these things that you've done. I forgive you. And he let this man into Jannah. He let him into heaven. This story was amazing to me. I felt like if this man can get into heaven after doing all of these things, then I can make it into heaven. Because I was constantly having my doubts, constantly afraid of everything I did. In Christianity, you're condemned for everything you do. And you need to go to confession and confess your sins. And even if you go to confession, you still might have to go into purgatory. You still aren't guaranteed a paradise. This man said, God will never get tired of forgiving you as long as you never get tired of asking for forgiveness. Hearing this gave me goosebumps and it made me so excited and so happy. I remember leaving that mosque that day and my friend saying you're gonna become Muslim aren't you and I said no of course not I still think that Jesus is God so no I'm still gonna be me I'm still gonna be Catholic I just really respect Islam a lot more now then I had I started getting to friends I started to put my faith to the test started asking me questions that I couldn't answer. They started asking me questions about Jesus that I would simply, I didn't know. I never even thought of it that way. So I started to question it from a different standpoint. I've been thinking about this my whole life and never really thought of it that way. So I started thinking about Jesus and the whole him being God and the Trinity. And I've been taught three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then for those things to just, it just didn't make sense anymore. And that really, I started to question my faith. I didn't know what I was, who I was, and what to believe anymore. I broke down. I started to cry every day because I didn't know and part of me was drawn to Islam and I wanted to become Muslim but I was too scared. I would cry and I'd cry and I would talk to my friends and I said I want to become Muslim. I really do. My heart and my heart 
but I'm scared. What are my friends going to think? What are my, what is my family going to think? My family's going to disown me. I didn't know. There was also some things about Islam that I didn't understand and I needed answers. So I met with many friends and I talked with them and even some of my questions were too difficult for them and they said, you need to talk with the sheikh. You need to talk with the sheikh or you need to talk with an imam because I can't answer these questions. And I'm not gonna tell you something false about Islam. So, I've, even though I didn't get some of my answers, I did get others and things started to make sense. I felt welcomed, I felt loved, and I felt at peace and I was so, I was starting to feel happy and I could finally openly discuss my faith with people and they didn't think it was weird and I really loved that. And then again I started to feel scared because I was still thinking about my family. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to pray. I asked God to lead me in the right direction and whatever direction he leads me to, I will go and I will follow. I will follow wherever God leads me. And then one day, I felt the sudden urge to put my head on the ground. When I put my head on the ground, I felt like I had the answer. Then one day, I just my friends were telling me that if I want to go to the mosque and ask my questions to the imam, I need to wear a hijab. And I had no clue how to wear a hijab. And then one day when I was with that learning community from before, we went to Chicago and I bought a scarf that I was going to wear as a hijab. And I wrapped it around my head and I wore it. And as soon as I put it on, I felt confident and beautiful. And I thought, wow, you can see my face. You can see me. And I wore it for the rest of the trip. I finally realized that Islam is where I belonged. And I got encouraged by friends, my friends that were not Muslim and friends that were. And I also got discouraged by others that were both Muslim and not. My friends that were Muslim were discouraging me simply because they didn't want me to become Muslim and then turn around and become Catholic again. They wanted to make sure I was ready. They said, if you're ready, then go for it but you gotta be 100% sure. So then I decided for myself, I decided that I was going to become Muslim. And then I called an imam and I made it a date and I talked with him, asked him the questions that my friends could not answer. He gave me the answers I needed and I decided this is what I want. I'm gonna be Muslim. So I did it and I scheduled my shahada. My shahada is a shahada is the rite of the initiation. Just that's all you need to do is to become Muslim is to say these simple words. Wa ashhadu illa illallaha illallahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulullah. These words mean I hereby state that there is no god but Allah. And I also state that Muhammad is his messenger. Once you say that I, you're Muslim. My friends brought me. They took me to the mosque. I said my shahada. People always ask me, what, do you, what did you feel like when you became Muslim, when it finally you said the shahada? And I just said, mashallah, I can't explain it. When, I, when it happened, I fell back. I couldn't even, I felt like I was going to fall over. It was a whole new feeling. When you convert all of the sins of your past are gone. It's wiped clean and you're brand new. It's like your newborn baby. It was freeing and I was feeling, I felt like crying. It was liberating and freedom and just all of these different things that I just simply cannot explain. But it was the most amazing feeling in the world.